Did you know that one day we're not going to need help? Isn't that exciting? <laughs> if you are struggling with just life, life seems to be knocking you down over and over and over again. You're struggling in your faith, you're struggling in your promises and your dreams that you feel like God is giving you and you just really need some encouragement. I hope you'll stay with me today. We're here talking about hope. We're um, going to be breaking down Romans 5, 1 and 2. And I, I have found gold. I'm so excited to share with you about hope and about glory. Join me today. I am Andy Lee. I'm an author of three books, two are Bible studies. One is on Ruth, the other on Esther. And I've written a book on the Marys, a Mary like me. And all of my books, all of my studies are written for you to understand and to know how much God loves you, how human the people were the biblical characters in the Bible who we lift up to such high places. They were just like you and me. And today, as I teach again on hope, I just pray that this will encourage you more and more in your faith. Because faith, my friends, is what it's all about. So we've been reading um, scriptures on hope for 30 days on my website. I've got a reading plan. 31 scriptures on hope. And if you need some encouragement, I hope you'll go to wordsbyandylee.com and get that free resource, that free printable. And I'm telling you, these scriptures are so powerful. I hope you'll do that if you need some hope. But today we're going to dig into Romans 5, 1 and 2. Now you'll notice on my reading plans that I just give one or two scriptures for the day. And I do that on purpose, partly because I know you're busy and, and sometimes we just need help knowing what to read. Like we want to be in the Word, but we need some help knowing where to go. And this is... Um, and th these always have a theme, and so for 31 days, you're focused on scriptures that are that are focusing you on one thing, such as the hope that God has for us. Um, but I do um, just one or two verses too, because sometimes we're so familiar with the scripture that we might read the whole chapter, or we might read five verses and it just flows because we're so familiar with it that we don't stop and really contemplate what each word and what each verse is saying to us. So that's my other purpose for the one or two verses a day in the reading plan. And so when I was preparing to um, teach this message, I was teaching on Instagram on Fridays live and then I come back and teach it for my YouTube channel. And as I was preparing for it, I really thought I was going to teach Romans 5, 1 through 5. And I just started, you know, working on 1 through 2. And I found so much that I was like, yeah, this will be an hour long. So we're only on verses 1 and 2. And it's proof to my theory that when you just focus on a couple of verses, you really can take time to find gold. So let me start by saying this promise. One day, we will not need hope. Can I get an amen? Put it in the comments below. One day, we will not need hope. One day, we will not need hope for provision. One day, we will not need hope for healing. One day we will not need hope for eternity because we will be there. One day we won't need hope for heaven because we will be bowed before the throne. We will witness the 24 elders 
bowed before the throne, placing their crowns at the feet of Jesus. And we will be among the multitude, praising, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty. One day, we're going to not need hope. But until then, we are in the middle of the now and the not yet. And that's why it's so important that we are in the scriptures. Because the scriptures all point to the hope. They help us know how to live in this place in the middle of the now and the not yet. And they tell us all about the goodness and the kindness and the faithfulness of God, the one who created us and made a way for us to be saved through Jesus. So Romans 5, 1 and 2. You ready? Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Whew. Mic drop. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We are going to unpack what that means at the very end. So stay with me because really this is the best part of this message. But I got to go through some other things before we can get there. So did you notice that at the beginning of that scripture, verse 5, chapter 1, the first word is, therefore... Now, I would not be a good Bible teacher if I did not tell you something maybe you've probably already heard, that when you see the word therefore, you need to look at what was taught before that so you'll understand why the there is there, what it's there for. So if you look at chapter 4 in my Bible, which is the NIV, the title for chapter 4 is Abraham Justified by faith. And so all of chapter four is about Abraham. Now I've been, I've been um, teaching a Bible study, which is a group of my friends here. And it's a study I wrote years ago. It's not published yet. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll just put it out there myself. But um, it's called Call to Belong, and it's on Romans. And what's really important for us to understand, Romans is this you know, famous book of the Bible really lays out the path of salvation. But it's really interesting to remember that Romans was written in first century to the first century church in Rome. And the purpose of Paul's letter was because they were having all kinds of problems because the first century church looked nothing like our church does now. There was no huge separation yet between Judaism and Christianity. And so, you know, Jesus was Jewish. Salvation came from the Jews. Jesus' disciples were Jewish. The 3,000 people that came to faith in the book of Acts I would say probably, if not all, most of them were Jewish because they were God-fearing Jews who had come for Pentecost. That's another story. That's another message I promise to give one of these days soon. Anyway, the first century church was having all these birth pains because they really didn't know how to deal with each other, especially the Gentiles didn't understand how to love on their Jewish believing brothers and sisters because their Jewish believing brothers and sisters still followed their traditions because their families had followed these traditions for ever. I mean, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. And so Jesus did not take away from their Jewishness, my friends. He added to it. He fulfilled their faith. He fulfilled the law. And so you've got these Jews who don't believe in Jesus, the Jews who do believe in Jesus, and the Gentiles who believe in Jesus but don't adhere to this tradition, don't think it's important. And so in the book of Romans, Paul is really talking to the Gentiles, proving the point 
that the Jewish believers and the Jews are still very loved by God and very important. And so is the tradition and in everything. And it, it is, it came, Jesus came from them. And so you can't throw them out. You can't throw away what they've done. And so in chapter 4, he's talking about Abraham. It goes back to Abraham, y'all. It goes back to the Jews' um, ancestors and and their patriarchs. In verse 16 in chapter 4, it says, Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, those Jewish believers, but also to those who are a faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is a father in the sight of God in whom he believed. He trusted. Abraham trusted the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they are, oh, come on, we could just probably chew on that one for a long time. Oh, i got to study that one. He calls things that are not as though they were. And then it says in verse 18, against all hope, Abraham and hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him. And without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead um, since he was about 100 years old. And y'all, that I'm from Texas and Oklahoma where we like hyperboles, but that's not a hyperbole. He really was about 100 years old. And that Sarah's womb was dead. Sarah was old. She was in her 90s. And yet he did not waver through unbelief through not trusting God regarding the promise of God. But he was strengthened. (laughs) He became even stronger in his faith and his trust of God um, in his faith. And he gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. He was fully persuaded. He gave glory. He kept trusting God and he kept giving glory to God. Now let's talk about that word glory for a minute. So that word glory means honor. It means praise and it means admiration. So despite everything, Abraham still trusted Somehow God was going to fulfill this promise that through his body, he would have a son and he would be the father of many nations. Somehow God would do this. And so he trusted him and he kept giving God honor and admiration and praise. He kept giving glory to God, and this is why it was credited to him as righteousness, as being right with God. And so then it continues. Um, The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will credit righteousness for us who trust Believe. Now, the word believe, this is belief and faith, come from the word pistis in the Greek, and it means trust. And that helps me to say trust because I can believe something in my head. And sometimes we think faith is like, oh, for just have enough faith, right? We just think about it enough. But when you write, say the word trust, it goes from your head to your heart when you trust somebody and you trust them with your head and your heart. You know them, you know they're worthy, you, you, you've seen them in action and you know their heart and so you trust them. And so this is about trusting God in Him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Y'all, justification 
means the act of declaring somebody righteous. It also means validating that that they're right with God. And it also means not guilty. Now, I didn't say innocent, but not guilty. Like the verdict has come out, not guilty, (laughs) because we trust in Jesus. So then he says, therefore... Since we have been justified, since we have been claimed not guilty and right with God because of Jesus, because our trust through faith, through trusting, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by trusting in this grace, I'm going to stop for a minute. Grace, grace is amazing. Grace is charis. Grace is favor. Grace brings great joy. Grace is favor. It's a gift. It's not deserved. It's not earned. It's a gift. Somebody say gift. It's a gift. Grace is a gift. I'm sure you've heard that before. But grace is this undeserved, unmerited favor. Favor. So I'm going to change that word grace to favor, right? So we've gained access by by faith, by trusting into this favor in which we now stand. The word stand is esteemy, and esteemy literally can be standing, but figuratively it means in a place of judgment. Like when they stood before the Sanhedrin that really was They may not have really literally been standing, but they were being judged. So here this means that we have gained access by trusting into this favor in which now we stand in this judgment. (laughs) All right? But we're not judged. We are in favor. We, We have been favored We're right with God. That's the place we are in as we are judged. And so he says, And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, what did I say glory meant? When it said that Abraham, that God, He gave glory to God. That was he gave God honor. And he gave God admiration. And he gave God praise. So when we read this verse, that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, I think most of us I know in the past, I thought, well, I guess that means heaven, right? Standing in his glory. No. Let's take that same definition as what Abraham was doing with God. We now stand in the admiration, in the honor, in the praise of God. Let me read that whole thing. Through whom we have gained access by faith, by trusting into this favor in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the admiration and the honor and the praise of God. (laughs) And it's so sweet. And it's so powerful. I think there are scriptures that um, connect this. I mean, Jesus talked about the parable of um, the master and the servant. And the master says to the servant who's, you know, done a great job, well done, good and faithful servant, y'all. That is the glory of God. That is the honor and admiration and the praise of the master that he promises us. Now, I have a Bible. I'm like, which one do I want? So I have a Bible that I love. It's called the the Keyword Study Bible. And this is really what turned me on to understanding the word glory and what this scripture really means. The back of this Bible has definitions, annotated definitions. And the um, editor is Spyros Zonihades. And I love his um, 
definitions, but he wrote that doxa, which is the Greek word for glory, one of the meanings of it theologically is with respect to believers, it signifies their exalted status as the objects of divine approval and blessedness. Eventual transformation and their persons and all things into this beautiful condition. It is a state in which one is accorded the fullest enjoyment of the admiration and honor of God, the object of his highest regard and praise. I can't, I, I can't, y'all. I just, I can't imagine that. Can you? I mean, we're so unworthy. <laughs> but we don't get it there on our merits. There's not going to be any pride there in heaven. We know. We know we're not worthy. Yet this promises, because of just trusting Him, because of our trust in what Christ has done, we will stand in this place of favor this place of admiration and honor, the bestowal of exaltation to his right hand. So listen to this. So God's expression of glory consists in the bestowal of exaltation to his right hand, the inheritance of his kingdom, resurrection, and the enjoyment of the fullness, satisfaction, joy, and righteousness and ceaseless delight. And he says, we don't, we don't have this. We're in the middle of the now and the not yet. But we do have the Holy Spirit. Oh man, can I just tell you, they know, God knows, Jesus knows how hard it is in this planet, on this life. They know the pain and suffering. They know, they understand the temptation. The scriptures and Revelation say we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. They know, they know it's not easy. And so when we do finally make it to the other side, we will we will experience the glory, the honor, the admiration, and the praise of God. Oh, man. Hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up, Father. This is hard to comprehend. And even as I teach it, there's a part of me like going, are you sure about it? But God, it's it's in the scriptures and it's telling of who you are your heart your personality your love for your children your understanding of what we're going through god strengthen those who are watching just as abraham's faith was strengthened as he trusted you i pray for their faith and trusting you to be strengthened by the power of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit within them. And Lord, I pray if they're like, oh, I'm not sure about this, that they will study. And even if they're like, that's amazing, that they will study, that you will lead them to study in this and, and finding it on their own and letting it come to life within their hearts. Thank you. Thank you for this hope. Thank you for this promise. And thank you for the goodness that you are. You're so good and kind. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Y'all, I pray that that blessed you today. I'll put some notes below um, with the links to, to the information where I got it. Some more links like in blueletterbible.org where you can also look up these definitions 
and um, I'll, I'll give some also some links to some other scriptures that uh, that correspond to this. I, I pray and encourage you. I pray your faith be strengthened, and I pray that it um, encourages your hope because you know what? One day we're not going to need hope at all. Thanks for joining. See you next time.